To rip from a favorite XKCD comic, the levels of science are a complex hierarchy, but there is a subject which ultimately rules. Sociologists are marked as the innocent, not really in a scientific field scientists. Psychologists laugh at the sociologists for the ripped off use of psychology. Biologists laugh at the psychologists for the ripped off use of biology. Chemists laugh at the biologists for the ripped off use of chemistry. Physicists laugh at the chemists for the ripped off use of physics. And somewhere all the way across the room, the mathematicians are wondering what the f you need science for. Last week I introduced you guys to a specific combat situation and proposed the 90% right choice while pointing out the surrounding subtle details. I suggested that any particular red-green drafter in the current format would have a 2.3 times as likely chance of an instant answer to this situation as to a green drafter, assigning corresponding values to the red and green instants of each rarity and in each set with the corresponding sizes and numbers of cards per draft. But this was not enough. As many observed, not everyone is going to play Bull Rush or Double Groundswell. And so, the comments were aflame. While I tried to cool the fiery temperaments of both sides, dueling over whether such a number was fair to foretell, my tone came off as politically correct, but slightly off target. Kind of like, Your mom's is so talented, she can sing, dance, and play the piano! <laughs> While others' opinions projected as, Weeks to die of a lethal injection. So, magic is a game of math, right? Partially correct. Magic is a game of complex, interweaving numeric systems with each drafted pack's corresponding random nature. Obviously, whether a pack is an Akum battle singer or a bull rush will affect what you play. But also remember that magic is a game of emotional attachment to a style of play. In such a manner, there is no exact calculatory successful process for you to follow. But how does this help you improve on last week's lesson? This means that all science can be put to good use, metaphorically. When you can't rely solely on math, you fall back to the psychology of those drafting around you. The little kid preferable to life gate. The big guy drafting the fatties. The sly girl of control magic. The emo kid in the corner taking the vampires. Ultimately, you shouldn't be distracted in a draft or match by these aspects, and neither should your fellow drafters. Often, someone shouldn't play too few creatures or too many tap lands. But we do. These flawed psychologic choices occur not just at the kitchen table, but at Friday Night Magic, in testing for a PTQ, and at the Pro Tour itself. We adapt to certain styles, even when they are 75% the wrong choice, because we know of a prior promise. This is where magic takes a step from a game of pure calculation, to one whose inner choices are manipulated by habitual flaws of the human mind. And I wouldn't have it otherwise.